Okay, hello everyone. I want to talk about the workability of the new policy that was being presented and also talk about the disadvantages to this new policy that the U.S. should replace the Electoral College with the national popular vote. Now onto the workability of this new policy. Advocates of this new policy believe that one person, one vote would make this process of electing our president much easier and a lot faster. This is not true, however. I want you guys to imagine Florida back in 2000. You guys can all remember that election since it just happened. With the recount due to the dimples and uh, pregnant Chad, this was able to completely, uh, with the electoral college in place, we were, com we were able to completely isolate the, uh, isolate what was happening because of the electoral college. An indirect election would cause a more broad recount since it would be harder to isolate the issue. Uh, according to uh, Ross Williams from law.umtk.edu, in a close contested election, recounts will usually be confined to a state or two rather than across the country, a recount that might be required if we had direct election of the president. With the nationwide popular vote, it would also take a lot longer to catch the issue uh, so until it was caught, it would just make the election process even longer than it already is. If we were to slow down the election process, this would also just add to uh, this would also add to the duration of our lame duck president we have in office. Basically, a lame duck president is a president who is in office during the second term at the time of the new election and has no support of the, uh, for their policies since they're at, they're at the, they're on their way out of the presidency. Now to go on to the disadvantages of the new policy, I will talk about how it takes away from federalism and how it takes away from the states and how the new policy, uh, how, how the new policy with the, will be solely focused on urban areas. Back to how this will take away from federalism in our country. Our country, since the Constitution was created, has had a two-party system that has worked for the past 200 years and then some. If we were to change our policy to direct popular vote, according to uh, Jackson County, he writes, there will be more of an incentive for a multitude of minority parties to form in the attempt to prevent whatever popular majority might be necessary to elect the president. This is just saying that if we had a bunch of, uh, bunch of groups of third parties, in order to get another party uh, ahead in the election, they might just create, uh, they might just be created in order to push people away to a different party and take away votes from, another, from the other party they're trying to oppose. With the creation of third parties in our federal system, this would create a hardship in our system. Our system today is able to prevent radical groups or parties from gaining substantial power or influence because of our two-party system. We are able to, because of our two-party system, we are able to strike down uh, interest groups and other parties like the CPA, which the CPA is the Communist Party of America during the 1920s, which was gaining a lot of support from labor unions such as the Farm Farm Labor Union. Now, can you guys imagine if we were if we would have allowed uh, if we would have not had the Electoral College, we would have let groups such as the Communist Party of America to gain support in our government. If we were to have a direct popular vote in our country, according to Jackson County, uh, the result from the direct popular election for the president then would likely be frayed an unsustainable uh, political system characterized by a multitude of political parties and by more radical changes from policy from uh, one administration to the next. So this is just saying if we had a multitude of parties, each, so each party would be solely based on a certain issue, and each, each administration would have radical views in their presidency. Now on how this will take power away from the states. The Electoral College is designed to represent each state's choice for presidency, with the number of each state's Electoral College vote being the number of senators plus their popular election for the president would strike at, at the very heart of our federal structure laid out in our Constitution and would lead to the nationalization of our central government to, to the detriment of the states. Indeed, we become obsessed with the government by popular majority as only consideration. Should we not then abolish the Senate with the representative states regardless of population? Should we correct the minor distortions in the House caused by districting and guaranteeing each state at least one representative? By changing it to the system of proportional representation, this would accomplish government by popular majority and guarantee the representation of minority parties, but it would also demolish our federal system of government. If there, if there are reasons to maintain state representation in the Senate and in the House, 
as they exist as they exist today, then surely the same reasons apply to the choice of president. Why then apply the policy to only the electoral college? Now to go on to the last point about it prevents uh, a victory based solely on urban areas. With the direct popular vote, small town America would be lost in the ca in campaigns due to the fact that groups campaigning would focus their attention mainly on more heavily populated regions of the country, such as New York and Los Angeles. James Whitson writes, um, the Electoral College prevents candidates from ignoring, ignoring small states in favor of big metropolitan areas. In a direct election, New York City would have about twice the electoral clout as states of Alaska, Delaware, Montana, uh, North Dakota, Vermont, Wyoming combined. Why even campaign in those six states when you can double your impact by spending more time and less money in one city? The need and issue of small rural communities would be outweighed in the candidates' minds by both by those large urban areas. It would be yeah. one would be able to see that these small states would be easily forgotten in the by the major metropolitan areas. In conclusion, this is. This is going against what our founding fathers created during the Constitutional Convention. We have this system for over 200 years and it's worked so far. There have only been four instances when the popular vote has contradicted to the electoral vote. There is not enough evidence to show that this new system will be any less problematic than the one that we have implemented right now. But the possibilities of a nationwide recount voter fraud, how it takes away from our federal system, and how it takes power away from our states, we should refrain from changing our present system. Thank you.